Hey there and welcome back to NBA 2K18. My name is Pete and today we complete the trade deadline. The frequency of trade offers was already increasing in the last episode and with the trade deadline only two weeks away, I think that trend will continue. We also have at least one move to make ourselves, but let's start things off with some in-game action as the Louisville Legionnaires face the Atlanta Hawks. The Hawks, by the way, without Dennis Schroeder, who's currently injured, I hope I don't call anything again here, so this guy right here, Kent Bazemore, will likely have to shoulder the majority of the load for them. At halftime, things are looking fine so far, we have a small 3-point lead, and we're also comfortably out-rebounding the Hawks. And even late in the fourth quarter, that lead didn't really get much bigger, we're up by 5 with less than 1 minute left to play, and we can already give player of the game honors to Maurice Harkless. A very solid all-around game from him tonight, and he would finish the game 1 rebound shy of a double-double with 11 points, 9 rebounds, 6 assists and 3 steals. And so, despite this game being rather close, in the end we come up with the win, as we beat the Hawks 102-95. Our scoring leader, no surprise at this point, Josh Richardson with 20 points, he also had 4 rebounds and an assist, actually not too spectacular scoring from the field but he went to the free throw line 10 times and was able to add 9 points that way. Hernan Gomez also with a very solid performance in this one, we haven't really seen much from him in the last few weeks, but today he came back strong with 19 points and 5 rebounds. Another more than noteworthy performance, Joe Chi's 13 points in 18 minutes, showcasing once again that he can be a powerful force inside. And I know that a lot of you have asked me to give him a bit more playing time, and I think I'll do that after the trade deadline when I plan to experiment a bit with our rotations, but one thing we shouldn't forget about him is that Joe Chi is rather injury prone, and that is really my main reason why I'm a bit hesitant to play more. Lastly then, Deontay Davis, who had 12 points, 7 rebounds and also 4 blocks in 28 minutes, slowly but steadily developing into a very, very promising rim protector. This game, by the way, also the tiebreaker with Atlanta, and so, despite having the same record as the Hawks, we are currently ahead of them in the standings, occupying rank number 14 in the Eastern Conference. Up next, we're going up against the Dallas Mavericks, and this one was decided in the second quarter, and so even a competitive second half didn't change anything about the final outcome, and so the Legionnaires are now 2 for 2 in this episode, winning against the Mavericks 113 to 103. Our scoring leader in this one, Alex Abrinas off the bench, who had 20 points in 20 minutes, and even though he lost his starting job to Josh Richardson, I am still very excited to see Abrinas develop for the next two or three seasons. Both Davis and Hernan Gomez were only one rebound shy of a double-double, with Davis putting up 16 and 9 and Hernan Gomez 12 and 9. Now our third game of this episode will be against the Phoenix Suns, but before we get to that, we are going to make our second trade of the season. And it is going to be the one that I already talked about in the last episode, we will try to move Sheldon Mack for a second round draft pick. The reason for that is really quite simple, Mac is on an expiring contract, and if I'm not mistaken, he has a total playing time of about one minute for us so far this season, and that is also not going to change anytime soon as long as Abrinas, Richardson and Vaughn are all ahead of him in the rotation. At the same time, there are definitely teams in the league that could use a young guard like him, even if it's just for the remainder of the season. Now, before we trade him, however, we want to make sure he's called up from the G League again, because I'm not really trusting the CPU-managed teams to call them up themselves. Now, the team we're targeting is actually the one that we're going up against next, the Phoenix Suns. I think it's safe to say that their current guard rotation is more than problematic, as right now, with the injury to Devin Booker, which is going to last a few more weeks, I believe, they only have Reed and Millsap to man the two-guard. And that is not exactly what you can call a deep rotation, especially considering that we also took Tyler Hewlett away from them in the expansion draft, so I think acquiring another shooting guard, even if it's just for the remainder of the season, that should be something the Suns would want to do. In exchange, we're going to ask for their second round draft pick this year, and if we look at where the Suns are currently standing, firmly in last place of the Western Conference, that pick should be very very early in the second round and therefore still have some value for us. So this right here is the trade that I propose, Sheldon Mack for the Phoenix Suns 2018 second round draft pick, and I would have to think this is a fair offer for both sides. And the Suns seem to think so as well, because they have agreed to the offer, and so we have just completed our second trade in franchise history. 
This now leaves us with another roster spot to fill, but we're going to leave that open until the trade deadline is over, as this roster spot gives us a bit more flexibility, and maybe if another trade offer comes up, we might be able to use that. And speaking of trade offers, after making this trade, we were actually immediately presented with a trade offer that makes use of the free roster spot, as the New York Knicks offer Kyle Quinn and Lance Thomas for more Harkless and the second round draft pick that we just acquired. Now, while Kyle Quinn is definitely a serviceable player, he is also a few years older than the rest of the team, and I have no plans to give up our starting small forward for him. Sure, at 27 years old, Quinn is not exactly past his prime, but I think if we look ahead at the future of the team, then Moharkless definitely has more value to us than O'Quinn. So this offer gets declined, and we can proceed with our game against the Phoenix Suns. And after two wins to start the episode, we lose this one decisively. The Suns beat us in all four quarters and take away a 20-point victory. For us, no one really stood out, the best performance probably Tyler Eulis with 18 points, 4 rebounds and 4 assists, but again, no one really made a name for themselves in this one. Next game against the Indiana Pacers, and I'd like to take you into the last 20 seconds of this one. We're down by 3 and just finished a timeout, and instead of letting the clock wind down and go for the game-tying 3-pointer, I inbounded the ball to Josh Richardson, who took a long contested 2 and somehow managed to make it. Probably the worst shot imaginable in this scenario, but in the end he made it and so we had to foul, which took a few seconds longer than I wanted it to, but finally we managed to send Victor Oladipo to the line with 15 seconds left. Oladipo would make the first, but then missed the second and so immediately off the rebound we take a timeout. Now with 14 seconds left the ball goes to Richardson and I decided to isolate an Oladipo. And what happened next can only be described as late-game heroics. Richardson drives, once again takes a contested mid-range shot, gets fouled but still makes it, and we have a tight game with 3 seconds left and the potentially game-winning free throw coming up. And once again, let's look at the replay here, Wall is shot by Richardson, off the dribble over two defenders with the foul, still makes the shot and now has a chance to win this one. And Richardson makes it, and he has single-handedly turned this game around for us. We're up by one now, and the Pacers take a timeout. Off the inbound, the ball goes to Oladipo, but he's well defended, and the shot misses. And so the Legionnaires come away with a last-second victory here, with Richardson's performance in crunch time saving us the game. In the end, both him and Tyler Hewlett led the team in scoring with 17 points each, but I think it's safe to say that Richardson was the man of the match tonight. Also, this block right here on Darren Collison, a thing of beauty. Next up, the New York Knicks, but before we get to that, we have not one, not two, but three trade offers to look at. First of all, the Oklahoma City Thunder offer Patrick Patterson in exchange for Jamal Crawford from the Las Vegas Aces, and let's quickly have a look at the players involved. For the Thunder, losing Patterson could weaken their frontcourt rotation a bit, but they have quite a few small forwards on the roster who can step in at that position, and Enos Kanter, who's listed as center here, is also a viable option. Acquiring Jamal Crawford for the shooting guard would certainly deepen their rotation at that position, especially since at this point the Thunder are the third best team in the West, and the player like Crawford, despite being 37 years old, could certainly be of use in a deep playoff run. For the Aces, the trade is also sensible, losing Crawford doesn't hurt them too much with the Reddick still on the roster, and Justin Jackson is also growing into a serviceable backup player. Acquiring Patterson for the next two, maybe three seasons, depending on his player option, that is not the greatest move in the world for them, but it's agreeable enough, I suppose. In their frontcourt rotation, Michael Beasley and Javal McGee are both expiring, and there is a realistic chance that Dwayne Dedman might test the open market instead of taking his player option, and so they have three big men potentially leaving after the season, so acquiring a longer-term contract makes some sense, especially since compared to Crawford, the player is also much younger. So in the end, I saw no real problem with this trade and therefore approved it. But the next one is already waiting, the Magic want to trade DJ Augustine to the Timberwolves in exchange for Carl Aldridge and a 2021 second round draft pick. This is a rather low profile move and it makes some sense for the Magic. Alfred Payton will become a restricted free agent after the season and I'm sure they will resign him to a longer term contract, and Sheldon Mack is compared to DJ Augustine a younger and cheaper option as the backup point guard. 
At the same time, the Timberwolves looking to get rid of a player in a very crowded frontcourt rotation, and I think instead of declining his team option and letting him walk and getting nothing in return, trading Aldridge now is the better option even if they have to give up a second round draft picks a few years down the line. So this trade also gets approved and here comes number 3 and the Suns are involved again, looking to ship Jared Dudley off to Atlanta in exchange for Tyler Dorsey and a second round pick. Once again, the move is not too spectacular, and it does make a lot of sense for the Suns. Dudley will be paid almost $20 million over this and the next season, and both at the power forward and at the small forward as well, he would only be the third option at best. Now the Hawks do give up a young asset here, and this is somewhat questionable, and they also have to give up a pick on top of that, but then again Dorsey is probably not going to be a franchise player for the Hawks, and they also have quite a few young guys at the small forward who can step in at the shooting guard and who are eager for playing time, so I don't think losing Dorsey hurts them too much. At the same time, they acquire a player who can play the power forward, which is certainly helpful considering that Ilyasova is expiring, and even if the Hawks are able to re-sign Ilyasova, the rotation down low is rather thin. So let's make it 3 out of 3 and approve this move as well, and then up next, we have the New York Knicks. And this one once again decided in a last second finish, the Knicks take the victory at home and beat us by 1 point, earning us our 33rd loss of the regular season. No surprises with Richardson as the top scorer for us, the rest of the team not all that spectacular. Now two games are left until the trade deadline, and the first one is against the Cleveland Cavaliers. I didn't expect the win here, so I simulated the entire thing, but in the end the game a lot closer than I thought. We obviously still lose this one, but a 3 point loss against the Cavaliers, that is nothing to be ashamed of. With 19 points, Tyler Eulis our top scorer in this one, but Richardson arguably with the better performance, as he put up 18 points, 6 rebounds, 5 assists and a steal. Now just days away from the deadline, our first potential blockbuster trade appears, the Hornets looking to acquire Hassan Whiteside in exchange for Nikola Batum and a second round draft pick. Now let's look at this, and from the Hornets' perspective, it makes sense to move Batum soon. The team has Michael Kidd Gilchrist ready to take over at the small forward, he has about the same rating as Batum and he's a lot lot cheaper. Batum's secondary position, the shooting guard, is filled with Jeremy Lamb and Malik Monk, and both of those will likely be a part of the Hornets' core for the foreseeable future. Now the big question mark here is acquiring Hassan Whiteside. The Hornets already have Dwight Howard under contract, and honestly I don't see how Howard and Whiteside would coexist. Now ideally, if this move gets made, the Hornets also look to trade Howard, but I can't control that, the only thing I can say is the two of them next to each other, that will be problematic. Another problem, and also the deal breaker in this trade, are the Heat themselves, who I think should first of all demand a bit more in exchange for Whiteside, since he is rating-wise a whole 6 points better than Batum. The Heat also have an 80 overall shooting guard locked down for the next 4 seasons, as well as an 80 overall small forward locked down for the next 3, maybe also 4 seasons, so I don't really see why they would want Batum in the first place. All in all, this trade doesn't really benefit anyone, and just from the players involved it is also a bit too lopsided for my taste, so sorry, no blockbuster trade for the moment. We do already have another move waiting though, Jakar Sampson and the second round draft pick for Alfa Rugamino, and this looks like a solid trade for both parties involved. Samson currently in a somewhat problematic position on the Kings roster. At the moment he's assigned to the G League, despite the only player ahead of him in the rotation being the 41-year-old Vince Carter, so it's understandable that Samson is not too happy in Sacramento. Acquiring Aminu would certainly be a move for the future for the Kings, as Vince Carter is likely not going to play for much longer. The Trailblazers then not only acquire a draft pick, but also another player at the small forward, so they might be able to somewhat balance out the loss of Aminu. Now, from the Trailblazers' perspective, this is once again certainly a trade with a question mark, because even though Aminu might come off the bench for them, he is still a serviceable role player, and it is doubtful whether or not Samson or any of the other guys on the roster are able to fill in that role. Still, the trade is not too far out there to decline it, and even after making the moves, the Trailblazers will not be completely without options. By the way, and I think this is something that should not be overlooked, the move also frees up $7 million of cap space for them next season, and not considering options, that would mean the Trailblazers have about $14 million available going into free agency. And that could certainly help them get another starting caliber player on board. So the trade offer is alright from my perspective, and so we can agree to this one as well. Now, there were a few more trade offers here, but nothing too spectacular, and in the end they also declined them all, so we head into our last game before the deadline, this one against the Indiana Pacers. We just faced them a week ago and were able to squeeze by for the win, let's see if we can repeat that. And it doesn't really look like it, apart from the second quarter, the Pacers firmly in control of this one, and in the end they beat us comfortably by 27 points. 
Ulyss, Johnson, Diallo and Richardson are our players who scored in double digits, but Ulyss definitely a step ahead of the rest with 23 points, 5 assists and a steal. And so we have made it to the trade deadline. The obvious question of course, are we going to make any more moves? The answer to that? No, we're not. I am actually pretty happy with the team right now. And apart from Yogi Ferrell, we have no expiring contracts that need our immediate attention. And with Ferrell, I'm quite confident we can re-sign him in free agency. That is of course if we need to, because we are of course going to have a good look at who else is available. And let's not forget that there are a few point guards in the draft class as well. So we'll keep him around for the rest of the season, he is doing a fine job as the point guard off the bench, and I don't think whether or not we trade him here will be the decision that makes or breaks our franchise. And there were actually no more offers on this last day, so that means all trades for the 2017-18 season are done, and we have 28 games remaining until the end of the regular season. For those 28 remaining games, I plan to experiment a bit with our rotations. We will see a few players get minutes that have been quiet so far, and we might also rest a starter here and there to put the spotlight on players who haven't been given that much of a chance yet. After the Sheldon Mack trade, we also have one open roster spot to fill, and in the next episode we will use that to bring in another veteran free agent for the remainder of the season. That will be in the next episode though, for today I think we can make the cut here. As always, if you liked this episode then leave a thumbs up, if you want to support the channel then feel free to subscribe and also check out my other series. And of course, thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time. Cheers!